Could this be the end of aspartame when we look at sweeteners and what's best for overall fat loss? I'm not talking about some of the stuff that's come out on aspartame on it being a carcinogen and whatnot. In case you haven't noticed, I didn't even talk about that because the research on aspartame is just so all over the place. But one of the things that we can do is find better sweeteners that have additional benefits. Now, what I'm getting at with this is, when you look at things like aspartame, when you look at things like sucralose, the reason that they're potentially beneficial for people that are trying to lose weight is because they're non-nutritive and they don't have calories. But they're probably not providing an additive benefit, right? They're not doing something positive. If anything, there could be a deleterious effect from them. Now, I'm not going to speak out of turn with that because again, the research is all over the place, but they're probably not doing something beneficial independent of lowering the caloric intake of the person that's using it. But now there's some interesting research and it's not just with aspartame, it's actually with sucralose too. So the first study that I'm gonna talk about is really interesting because it compares a different sweetener with allulose and shows some pretty interesting effects on fat loss. After today's video, I popped a link down below for 25% off of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. Now, when we're talking about the world of fat loss, we're talking about the world of changing your diet, a lot of it does start in the gut. So that link down below is for 25% off their Daily Symbiotic, which is a prebiotic and a probiotic. And the realm of gut microbiome research is so unbelievably insane. Like it is so cool. There's so much going on. And Seed has published a lot of their own clinical trials. They put their money where their mouth is with that stuff. And that is truly what I appreciate about them. So I don't generally recommend random probiotics. I think the only one I've ever recommended on this channel is Seed and it's been for a number of years. So that link is for 25% off down below. If you're trying to change your diet, trying to remodel your gut microbiome, Seed probably makes the most sense because it's, in my opinion, the most vetted probiotic that's out there. So that link is in the top line of the description for 25% off just beneath this video. Okay, I have rodent model papers and large human model papers to look at here. Now, this first one that I'm gonna reference is done in humans, but I'm going to pivot over to some of the metabolic stuff and talk some of the rodent model stuff as well. So let's start with this human paper. This was published in the journal Nutrition, and it was taking a look at aspartame versus allulose after consuming a meal. So what they had them do is they had them overnight fast, and then they had them consume breakfast. And with that breakfast, they either had them consume five grams of allulose or 10 milligrams of aspartame. So they wanted to see how this affected the energy expenditure and overall just metabolism. Did it change how fat was burned, how carbs were oxidized, yada, yada. What they found is that the aspartame group ended up having a decrease in their fat oxidation and no real change in their carb oxidation, but the allulose group had an increase in their fat oxidation. So they actually utilized more fat after this meal and it actually decreased their carb oxidation. So the allulose group ended up literally burning more fat as the fuel source after the meal. In addition to, of course, being a pretty much zero calorie, other than that, non-nutritive sweetener. But additionally, they also found that plasma levels of glucose went down and plasma levels of free fatty acids. Why does this matter? Let's put the glucose piece aside for a second because that one just gets rained on all the time. The fact that it decreased the amount of fatty acids that were circulating after a meal is huge because fats, as we know, although very beneficial, are also very caloric. So if you have a high amount of circulating fatty acids, you have a high amount that can potentially get converted into stored fat. So the fact that the allulose group ended up reducing the free fatty acid levels shows that there was a huge metabolic effect on the type of energy that was burned after a meal. So in this case, the research literally says they've concluded that allulose increases the postprandial fat oxidation which is great. I mean, that's great on a lot of different levels, but let's take a look at a rodent model paper for just a second that illustrates something slightly different. This paper was published in the journal Nutrients and it took a look at 121 participants and it was comparing sucralose to allulose, which was really, really fascinating. They gave subjects either a placebo, in this case it was sucralose, or they gave them a low allulose 
amount. In this case, it was four grams twice per day, or they gave them a high allulose amount, which was seven grams twice per day. What they found with this is compared to the sucralose group, the allulose group had significant reductions in body fat. They also had significant reductions in fat mass, and they severely attenuated the amount of subcutaneous fat that would have deposited. So it had an impact on their belly fat, and it also impacted their BMI, which may or may not matter depending where you stand in the whole world of BMI. What we see with this is that sucralose might be fine because you reduce your caloric intake and you reduce your potential sugar load. Okay, great. I'm not even gonna bag on sucralose. That's not the point of this video. I'm just not going there. But what we do see is that allulose has a beneficial effect because it's doing something metabolically. So is this the end of aspartame, the end of sucralose? I mean, the interesting thing is that with allulose and sucralose, you can get by with a lot less because it's very, very, very sweet. Allulose is not quite as sweet as sugar. So we're probably not going to see a lot of allulose sweetened beverages, right? We're not going to start finding Diet Coke sweetened with allulose because it's probably too expensive and it's probably just not sweet enough. Okay, but what we do see here is not that allulose is going to be the end of aspartame and sucralose, but it, what it is going to be is a better option, A, when you're in control, but B, to take along with meals, right? Now, if you are someone that is concerned about artificial sweeteners like sucralose and you know, aspartame and whatnot, and there is reason for concern. I'm not saying it's completely benign. There is reason for concern. It's just not flushed out entirely. Then you might be better off like sweetening a beverage with allulose. And you might be thinking, well, what about erythritol? Like where does erythritol come into play? We see erythritol in all these low carb products. Is erythritol safe? Is it better than allulose? What's the deal there? Look, I don't really have a problem with erythritol at all. There was a study that was published in Molecular Nutrition and Food Research that was pretty interesting. It was a mouse study, but they gave subjects either glucose uh, or they gave them erythritol or they gave them allulose or they gave them fructose. And they basically found that erythritol was beneficial, okay, but allulose ended up having the best metabolic effect. Allulose attenuated basically how the fat would deposit. It attenuated the fatty acid transport. It made it so that more fat was actually coming out in the stool versus getting into the actual bloodstream. So as far as which one is best, allulose is probably the best. Now erythritol still comes into question a little bit as to whether it ferments in the gut at all. Some people say it's excreted in the urine and that it doesn't have a fermentation effect in the gut, whereas some would say it's technically a sugar alcohol and it will ferment in the gut. Allulose does not ferment. Allulose is excreted via the urine. So that's where there is a difference potentially between erythritol and allulose. But erythritol doesn't seem to have a metabolic benefit, right? Erythritol seems to be almost net neutral, whereas allulose is a net positive, whereas aspartame and sucralose are probably a net negative because, I don't know, there's just some conflicting stuff out there, but at the very least, they're not getting you the additional benefit. So how much allulose do you really need to get the effect? Well, in terms of positive metabolic effect, you can see it in as little as a one gram serving, which is not much at all, but most of the effects seem to start around five grams. So if you're sweetening something, you probably wanna add five grams of allulose in, and if you're trying to get a heavy metabolic effect, you might wanna go upwards of seven and a half to 10 grams of allulose, and you can just, again, weigh it out with a scale and get an eyeball of what it looks like one time and then eyeball it after that, right? That way, you can use it as almost a supplement or as a sweetener. So when you have the option, I would use allulose. But if you don't have the option, I don't think the other ones are the end of the world. It's just best, better, net zero, bad. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.